To use English as the main language, press the return key. Prospect. For those of you who are new, my name is Jimmy. I'm a senior medical student here in Canada. And today we'll be talking about the 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro that just got released last week. If you're not that geeky about computers and tech specifications, let me break it down to you simply from a student's perspective and explain how the new 13 inch MacBook Pro matches up against other Apple devices like the 2020 MacBook Air and the iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard. Here are the list of things I will talk about in this video with the timestamps. But first, let me give you my perspective on MacBook Pros in general. I think the 13 inch MacBook Pros combine together the friendly user interface, the portability and performance all together that you can't really find in any other brands or any other Apple devices for that matter. So when you're choosing either the 2020 MacBook Air or the 16 inch MacBook Pro, the more powerful one, you're making a sacrifice in either performance or portability. And for me personally, as a student who's doing a lot of creative work like video editing, photo editing, this 13 inch MacBook Pro hits that perfect sweet spot. So let's take a look at the 2020 MacBook Pro and see how it's different from the previous models. The brand new 2020 MacBook Pro 13 inch model can basically be divided into two different versions. So you got the more powerful, expensive one with the two gigahertz quad core 10th generation core i5 processor with 16 gigabytes of RAM, double the storage at 512 gigabytes and four Thunderbolt ports as opposed to two. Then you got the cheaper baseline model, which is essentially the same laptop as the 2019 model, but with the integration of the Magic Keyboard as opposed to the Butterfly Keyboard. Apple has finally listened to their users complaining so much about the Butterfly Keyboard with the low travel distance. They finally brought back the Magic Keyboard into the 2020 MacBook Pro lineup. And typing is obviously super important in college, so let's compare the new Magic Keyboard to the old Magic Keyboard, the 2015 one. There's really no point in comparing the Butterfly to the Magic Keyboard because the Butterfly will perform so poorly. Uh, but just by feeling the difference here, I can already feel that the, the individual keys are a little bit bigger on the new one compared to the old one. I can say that the original Magic Keyboard has great travel distance, but compared to like a mechanical keyboard, obviously it doesn't have that much of an advantage or something like a ThinkPad. But I was still able to use the original Magic Keyboard very well in college and type fast with it. So let's see how this one does. So this is the new Magic Keyboard. And this is the old original Magic Keyboard. The new Magic Keyboard is pretty good, definitely better than the Butterfly Keyboard, but I think the Magic Keyboard, the original one, is definitely the winner here. The, the little bit more of an advantage, advantage it has with the travel distance definitely makes a lot of difference when you're typing. It just feels nicer, it grips your finger a little bit better. Um, so I would prefer the old Magic Keyboard compared to the new one, but it still types great. Then you got the touch bar. I personally love the physical keyboard, so I already know I'm not going to love the touch bar, but it adds a futuristic look to your laptop. They switched back to the physical escape button and a fingerprint ID, and it still comes with a larger trackpad that cannot be outmatched by any other laptops in the market currently. And in terms of the sound quality, I think the 2020 MacBook Pro has more bass to it compared to the 2015 MacBook Pro, but overall the volume sounds similar and the sound quality is pretty similar as well. Then you got the great build quality and design that Apple is known for. And with the intuitive user interface of macOS and increasing integration with other Apple products, 
other fantastic PC products like the Dell XPS series that just came out and the Microsoft Surface or the Samsung Galaxy Book. With cheaper and faster processors, they're still failing to steal college students' hearts. The new 13-inch MacBook Pro only weighs 3.1 pounds, very easily carryable with one hand. Uh, compare that to the 2020 MacBook Air, which only weighs 2.8 pounds. So there's only a 0.3 pound difference. Now comparing that to the 2015 MacBook Pro, which is still light, but definitely heavier than the new one. You will not feel that 0.3 pound difference in your backpack, but when you're holding it with one hand, or maybe lying down and having the laptop on your lap, that's when you might feel that slight difference. If I have one complaint about the design of this MacBook Pro, it's that the bezels are still apparent, unlike the Dell XPS laptop. I know that there are a lot of you who have been waiting for a 14 inch MacBook Pro, but with the coronavirus and with this particular model coming out, I think if you're waiting for that, you might have to wait until 2021. When talking about the additional upgrades to your new MacBook Pro, the processor doesn't seem to make that much of a difference based on the techie videos I watched. But if you're a serious multitasker with videos playing, millions of tabs open, Photoshop open, Final Cut Pro open, all at the same time, you would want to upgrade your RAM to 16 gigabytes from an eight gigabyte for extra 150 Canadian dollars. You think of RAM as your tabletop space. If you have a lot of stuff going on with all these programs and internet browser videos and all that, you will want a bigger tabletop. Then you got the storage space upgrade capabilities between a 256 to a 512 gigabytes. Technically, you can upgrade all the way up to two terabytes for $1,000 extra, but you and I both know that we're not gonna spend that much money. With my 2015 MacBook Pro, I ran out of storage space after three years of use, and that one has 121 gigabytes of storage, and I use a four terabyte external hard drive for my videos, so without videos, it already ran out of space, so I just wanted some bigger space so that I don't have to replace laptops more frequently. But it's a $200 upgrade to the 512 gigabyte one. I think the 256 gigabytes is plenty for an average student, unless you have like millions of photos and different programs and you're not using an external hard drive. Now let's shift gears and talk about what's most important when it comes to buying a laptop for students, and that is the price. The baseline 2020 13-inch MacBook Pro in Canada costs $16.99 or $15.69 with student pricing. And the baseline 2020 MacBook Air costs $12.99 or $11.69 with student pricing. There's essentially a $400 price difference between a MacBook Pro and a MacBook Air. iPad Pro on the other hand with the 12.9 inch display comes in at $11.69 and 11 inch at $9.79. I have the Magic Keyboard for $3.99 and Apple Pencil for $169. With the total iPad package of the 12.9 inch display at 1737. Guys, I think spending $1,700 on the iPad Pro package as opposed to the $1,500 MacBook Pro because you think laptops can be replaced by iPads, I think you're making a big mistake here. There's a high chance that you're going to need a laptop as opposed to just an iPad because the iOS operating system is just not compatible for college compared to the Mac OS operating system. There's a lot of videos on YouTube made by people who are not even students who say that the iPad with the Magic Keyboard combined together is perfect for college and that's all you need, that you can replace laptops with that. You need to be very careful listening to, the, to that advice because that only applies to a very small number of students. In reality, a lot of YouTubers who make those claims use their iPads as a secondary device to their laptops. And, and same thing goes with my classmates in medicine. People love to use iPad and there are a lot of people who use iPads in my class, but they always have like a laptop backup that they can fall back to when they have to write papers and all that. I'll make a video on this later, but here are some inefficiencies that you will run into with higher level courses in college. Adding references to your thesis or any sort of writing, making presentations, file sharing, transferring files on USB, downloading programs, running programs, formatting files and images, and file organization. The iOS operating system just cannot handle those tasks like the macOS systems do. And if you don't have extra cash lying around, please just go ahead with buying either a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro. Finally, let's talk about whether you should spend that extra $400 on buying a MacBook Pro as opposed to a MacBook Air. I would say that for most of you who are entering college or who are in college, the MacBook Air 2020 model is a fantastic choice for just getting school work done, for watching videos, for web browsing, for listening to music and all that. But just wait, 
When buying a laptop, you need to look at three to four years in advance because that's how long you're gonna use your laptop for. So you need to ask these two questions when you're split between a MacBook Air and a MacBook Pro. First, do I have any tinkering creativity that I may do any sort of creative work in the next three to four years? like using Photoshop to edit photos or using Final Cut Pro to edit videos or Adobe Premiere or Lightroom. And second, is $400 spread over four years, so $100 per year, worth the money for you to buy a laptop that is faster, cooler, quieter, and a little bit brighter? If you answered no to both questions, you should get the 2020 MacBook Air. If you answered yes to any of those two questions, you should get the MacBook Pro. As you know, the biggest difference between the two is the computing power. And based on a lot of techie videos I watched from guys like Marcus Brownlee, Linus Tech Tips, and Unbox Therapy, it seems that the general recommendation for MacBook Air buyers is to spend an extra 150 Canadian dollars to upgrade the baseline model's 1.1 GHz dual-core 10th generation processor to 1.1 GHz quad-core 10th generation processor because 2020 MacBook Air, while being great, just doesn't live up to the 2020 laptop standards in terms of its cooling capacity, in terms of fan noise, and its processing speed. The brightness difference of 400 nits for a MacBook Air and 500 nits for a MacBook Pro doesn't really make that much of a difference unless you're outside on a sunny day. So if you're going to spend an extra $150 to upgrade the MacBook Air from the baseline model, the price difference between a MacBook Air and a MacBook Pro comes down to $250. And at that point, I would say just spend that extra $250 and get the MacBook Pro. $250 Canadian stretched over four years is basically $62.5 per year. And I think for that much amount of money, MacBook Pro wins the battle every single day. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll upload more videos like this in the future, so click like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon.